So you have arrived. This is the last video for the DNA RNA unit and we're going to be talking about mutations. So what happens when DNA goes wrong? <clears throat> so to start off with, let's analyze this sentence. The fat cat ate the rat. Okay, so well we have a sentence, all of uh, three letter words and um, yeah, all using the same letter, T-H-E-F-R, okay? Um, so, it's kind of like DNA, based on codons and three-letter words, just like A-T-C or A-U-G. So, that's DNA. Well, if I change a couple letters in my sentence here. The sentence goes to the rat cat ate the tat. Well that sentence makes absolutely no sense. But I only changed two letters. So the sentence lost, it became nonsensical by the changing of two letters. Well let's say I changed my DNA to say the, the fat cat ate the rat. Well again, it kind of doesn't make any sense because it's got two these at the very front of it. It's kind of hard to catch if you're not looking carefully, but it says the, the fat cat ate the rat. Well, that's a little redundant and we need to remove one of those words. All right, so let's change DNA one more time. Ooh, that doesn't make any sense at all. Let's see, where did that come from? Ah, I only deleted the letter F and changed my words and kept them all as three letter words. So the, at, cat, ate, the, rat. All that happened was I took out the letter F and the sentence just made no sense as a result of that. What happened here? Oh, it looks like maybe I added another F accidentally at the beginning of the sentence, at the beginning of the word fat, and it changed the whole sentence to, again, nonsense. So the same thing happens when we're talking about mutations in DNA. <coughs> so a mutation, um, most mutations can be fixed by enzymes in your cells. If they are not, the mutation or the gene can be passed on to the next generation of cells. So anytime that there's something wrong with a cell, the mutation can be passed on. Sometimes this has beneficial effects, but other times it has adverse or negative effects. If the mutation happens in a body cell or a somatic cell, it will be passed on to subsequent daughter cells. So every daughter cell, every cell that comes after it, and somatic cells go through mitosis. So if a mutation happens in a cell that's going through mitosis, it's gonna be passed on to other cells in the area, but it will not be passed on to offspring. For example, cancerous cells. If an individual has skin cancer, when they become pregnant, then those, that skin cancer will not be passed on to their children. It'll be localized to the skin on their body unless we're talking about a malignant type of cancer, and that's a whole different animal that we're not gonna um, approach right now. If the mutation happens in a gamete or a sex cell, then it can be passed on to offspring. Those cells go through meiosis, so if the mutation happens in those cells, it's gonna be passed on to the next generation, and that's what we call genetic disorders. We have a couple of types of mutation. If the mutation affects a single gene, one gene by itself, it's known as a gene mutation, kind of common sense. Some examples of that would be sickle cell disease, Tay-Sachs disease, Huntington's, cystic fibrosis, cystic fibrosis, or albinism. <clears throat> All those have very um, wide range of effects. Uh, probably the most one that most people are familiar with is albinism. And in albinism, their bodies do not produce the type of pigment that they need um, to protect them from the sun, to give hair their color, 
um, to give eyes its color. So in albinism, they're individuals, if they're completely albino or completely white um, with red eyes and blonde hair. The second type, so here's a picture before I move on, is a gene mutation. Um, it's going to result in affected children, um, but only in one single gene. A couple types of gene mutations. We have point mutations, which are where one base is substituted for another. That's like the very first sentence we saw in that silly example at the beginning of these notes. That, that sentence where I changed it to the rat cat ate the tat. Well, that sentence makes no sense, but I only changed one letter for another. An example of this would be sickle cell anemia. The normal DNA for sickle cell is GAG, but the affected is just a change of one letter, and that results in GTG. And that abnormal sequence leads to blood cells that instead of look like they look like little donuts with a kind of not quite scooped out middle, they look like a crescent moon. They are sickle shaped. Well, those cells get stuck in the blood vessels. They don't travel as well around the body um, and they don't hold oxygen very well. So individuals with sickle cell anemia can have a hard time transporting oxygen during exercise and other physical activity and can also, also develop blood clots a lot more easily than individuals without. So all of that goes back to a single base. So instead of an A, the person got a T and as a result have a whole host of, of negative effects. The second type of gene mutations, it's another category, so I list them differently in your notes, but they are called frame shift mutations. There are two types of frame shift mutations. The first is an insertion and this is where a single base or an entire codon is inserted into the gene and it causes everything to shift to the right. So that's like the sentence where I added the F in front of fat and everything else shifted to the right and became totally nonsensical. So um, for example, we have Huntington's disease and its normal sequence is a codon ATG, CAG, and GCA. We have three different codons. But our abnormal sequence is where we will insert, whoops, let me go back, sorry, where we insert a C in front of that GCA codon at the end, and that causes that entire reading frame, the entire rest of that protein to be formed incorrectly. The second type of frame shift mutation is a deletion. This is when we take one single base or an entire codon is, is deleted from the gene and it causes the entire sequence of the DNA or the mRNA to shift back to the left. For example, we have cystic fibrosis. In cystic fibrosis, the normal sequence is CTC, TTT, GTG. So that's normal. An abnormal sequence is CTC, GTG. So that entire TTT uh, codon has been deleted um, in that frame shift mutation, uh, causing a whole host of effects. So cystic fibrosis is, has a lot to do with like lung ability to like get rid of um, fluids around the lungs and can cause a lot of really detrimental harmful effects in individuals that have it. The final type of mutation is called a chromosomal mutation. This is a mutation that affects the entire chromosome from the very beginning to the very end. It is a result of non-disjunction. So non-disjunction means that the chromosomes don't separate as they should during meiosis. So you end up with cells that have an abnormal amount of chromosomes at the end of that process of making sex cells or meiosis. I have a couple examples of that for you. 
The first is called Klinefelter syndrome. It results in a male that has the um, genetic makeup XXY. And some of the signs of Klinefelter sy syndrome would be the individual is taller, more muscular, uh, but less muscular than other males their age. They have a lot of feminine characteristics because they have two X's. So normally XX is female and XY is male, but these individuals receive two X's and a Y. So they're going to have some, some definite reproductive effects because they received additional sex chromosomes. The second type is Turner syndrome. This is the second example I have for you. This is a female, but she only received an X chromosome. She didn't receive XX and she didn't receive XY, which would make her male. So during the meiosis that made these individuals, the, the sex chromo chromosomes did not separate appropriately. So in these females, usually they have more masculine features and they look a little bit like a girl who really never gets beyond um, the puberty age. Um, they have very unique facial features, um, underdeveloped in, term, in comparison to other females their age, um, some elbow deformities, and they are unable to reproduce. And the third type is perhaps a more common chromosomal mutation called Down syndrome or trisomy 21, which means that there are three chromosomes in the 21st pair of chromosomes. And some characteristics of Down syndrome are the unique facial characteristics, flattened nose face, um, and face, upward slanting eyes, um, a lot of deformities or, or unique features in the hand. Um, and then their toes are the same way. So that's Down syndrome. Um, one extra chromosome in that 21st pair results in a lot of after effects for individuals with Down syndrome. And all that's caused that is non-disjunction in meiosis, meaning that they didn't get the right number of um, chromosomes in the egg or the sperm cell. But all of that said, chromosomal mutations are not always a bad thing. There are such things as beneficial mutations. This is anything that can benefit the organism and make it better. A couple of examples. Darwin's finches. Um, they had mutations that helped them that changed beak size. And those mutations gave them the ability to eat different types of foods. And ultimately resulted in different species of um, finches. Another is the neck of the giraffe. Um, as generations went on, the mutation that allowed for a longer neck became more advantageous. It became better for them. So those are the individuals that bred because they could eat to, to survive long enough to breed and make babies. So the long neck mutation continued on and grew. Same thing with the snowshoe hair, except with their coat color. Um, so in the wintertime, snowshoe hairs that look like the ones on the right were being eaten by predators, which means they didn't make it to springtime to reproduce and pass on their genetics. But the snowshoe hair in the left side that is all white was able to reproduce in the spring because it survived the winter by blending into the snow because of a mutation that made it white and that mutation then took off in that population and then the coat color of the snowshoe hair completely changed. So mutations, you usually think, oh, it's a bad thing, but they really can have beneficial effects for a population in the long run.